so I just got a new microphone with a pop filter. This is nice. I feel powerful and don't have the preposterous prospect to carefully pronounce the piece. Such a great investment, especially now that YouTube has paid me zero dollars. I feel more professional already. But come to think of it, I now have one fewer excuse to slack off and procrastinate. Worth it. Na tengonya makati si papa. Last time we did some practice for read aloud, and now it's time for repeat sentence. Seems like a good format, uploading the crash course series and question walkthrough in an alternating pattern. Because I'm too lazy to come up with a smarter schedule. There definitely will be more walkthrough episodes once we're done with the crash course, so you guys can have more practice material accompanied with detailed explanation. Let's quickly go through what you have to look out for when practicing repeat sentence. You will hear a sentence in the audio, and then you will have to recite it after just three seconds of preparation. You get a three for content only if you perfectly repeat the whole thing without any omission, insertion, or replacement of words. And as with most speaking questions, you should always keep an eye on your fluency and pronunciation. And the best way to achieve this is to remind yourself that you're essentially reading out the sentence with a script that is formed with your notes and your memory. For this specific question type, I will play the sentence, wait for a few seconds, and give you my sample answer as if I were to be taking the actual test. So there might be some mistakes and slight differences with the original audio. The main point is to show how I employ the strategies we discuss in the crash course and explain my thought process so that you guys can do better as well. Here we go. This is the first sentence. Most teaching staff make their lecture notes available online. Most teaching staff make their lecture notes available online. This is not a particularly difficult one, but it can be tricky to go for a three in content. Firstly, the clusters that you should be able to get right, no matter what score you're going after, teaching staff and lecture notes. As a student, if you're preparing for PTE academic, chances are you have experienced some form of secondary and/or tertiary education in English. And these two phrases should be very familiar. In fact, why not add in "make there" as well? You have no good excuse to not get those six words. If you can get those, you're pretty much set. So where is the obstacle to getting a full score? One would be staff. Staff is intrinsically plural, just like people and police. Whenever, Whenever we, we talk, talk about, about staff, staff, there, there should, should be more than, than one person. person. If, if there's, there's only one, one, that's just a lonely dude. So it is very likely for students to either add an S to staff or to make, and there goes the three for content. It's quite unfortunate, but it doesn't matter. A two for content is definitely enough. Another difficulty will probably be at the end. It is likely that you would only get the online but not the available, or the other way around. Again, it's not a big deal. Either way, we have achieved our bottom line, which is getting a decent score for content and not messing up our fluency and pronunciation in the process. Here comes the second one. Successful applicants will work with a large team of researchers. Successful applicants will work with a large team of researchers. And here's the script. Not too complicated with ten words. Just like we mentioned in the crash course, if you choose to pronounce the last word as researchers, like a posh Brit, it's your choice. Obviously, you don't want others to like you, but be proud of who you are. This is a very typical question in the sense that some students would trip on applicants because it's a moderately long word. If you find yourself to focus too much on this one word and miss the next bit, which is will work with a large team. I'd say the trade-off isn't really worth it. You're giving up six words for one. Now, I'm Asian, but I don't need 16 years of achieving excellence in mathematics to tell you that six is much bigger than one. I've had students before that might repeat the sentence as follows: Successful applicants will work with a team of researchers. It pains me to see that they miss the full content by just one single word. But again, it's absolutely fine because the structure is retained, and they got more than half of the sense. It's just that you disappoint me, slightly, but still disappointed. Moving on, 
This is the third sentence. Higher numbers of patients were infected than during previous outbreaks of the illness. Higher numbers of patients were infected than previous outbreaks of the illness. This one is quite difficult. I omitted during when repeating it myself for the first time, even though it's not a big deal. The room for error is definitely enough to cover such a teeny tiny hiccup. Because of the fact that this sentence is quite long, it becomes very important to use the strategies we talked about. The first would be recognizing the fact that this sentence ends with two separate clusters. If you can get one of them, even though it might make no sense in terms of meaning, you will still do pretty well with the final score. And this is a good example for you to practice when and how to utilize the method of something. Sentences this long will most likely have prepositions that add more nouns as an extension to the core structure. And if you find it difficult to memorize everything, including previous outbreaks and illness, remember that if you can get one of the full phrases, or if you can grasp the general structure and utilize the magical word something, you will probably be fine. If you can get the core structure of this sentence, you literally can repeat it without saying any of the words that have eight or more letters, like this. Higher numbers of someone were something than during previous something of the something. If I wasn't clear before, don't think this is good enough. This is definitely overkill, but using something occasionally is a very good strategy for test taking. By the way, am I the only one feeling that this sentence is actually foreshadowing COVID-19? If we are persecuting Bill Gates for his preemptive warning, shall we boycott Pearson as well? No? Just me? Let's start the fourth question. The final year will consist of four taught courses and one project. The final year will consist of four taught courses and one project. This sentence brings back such horrid memories of my last year in college, particularly that one project. This sentence has a future normal tense, but many students might miss that and will drop the will. As long as you can get the consistent part right, I won't worry too much from a practical standpoint. Students might also leave out taught and go with four courses and one project, which is not ironically something I encourage. Leaving out the taught actually gives the whole parallelism a nice symmetry, which is something we might talk more about later on for writing and reading. I'd like to make one more point before moving on to the next one. Based on the questions I have shown, you should be able to notice that there aren't many words that you don't know of. Repeat sentence rarely uses very scary vocabulary. And when they do, there won't be too many of them in one single sentence. So that's one thing to keep in mind when practicing. If you run into something you don't understand or haven't encountered before, it typically means you should know that expression or vocabulary. And if this happens during the test, you can always fall back on the method of something to simplify things. Just don't overdo it. Wouldn't it be annoying if I recorded this video saying nothing but something? The, the feeling, feeling is mutual. Got it? Here comes question number five. He started his tutorial presentation right on time. He started his tutorial presentation right on time. That's way easier than I thought. I've heard about the saying that for each question time, the individual questions usually ramp up in difficulty as you go on. Doesn't seem to be the case here, but whatever. It's going to be hard to justify if you can't get a three on content for this particular question. It's short, it has no scary vocabulary, and the structure is very simple. It might be understandable if you accidentally miss the tutorial or write, but if this is your average performance, I would suggest spending a few more days on practice before rolling your dice during the test and wasting your money. This is a very straightforward example for locating the pause. It's quite obvious that the speaker paused before write, and this change of pace is something you should include in your own speech. This is very important for your fluency to score high, which, remember, is the premise for you to be able to tank the content if that's your only option. This is question number six. The nearest automatic teller is in front of the anatomy labs. The nearest automatic teller is in front of the anatomy labs. 
I almost missed the S at the end of the sentence. There isn't an easy way to tell based on context whether lab is singular or plural, so you guys have to pay more attention to how the sound changes from lab to labs. Automatic teller doesn't seem to be the right expression, so it had me confused when I heard it. Seriously, if the ATM is what they meant by automatic teller, it should be automated teller machine. Damn you, Pearson. You just used a weird expression that I can't even find on Google, and that actually ended up in the question? Ah, <sighs> that ruined my day. <sighs> so refreshing. Now I'm back. For this sentence, is in front of is the part that you should have no reason to mess up. Whatever sentence you end up spilling from your mouth, this part should be in there. Anatomy might not be a very common word, so you have my permission to either switch it to something or just leave it out. In this case, it's part of a noun phrase, so structurally speaking, it doesn't change much if you leave it out. Again, screw that automatic teller. There's no such thing, according to Google, that is. Whatever. Here's the seventh question. Newspapers are supported primarily by the sale of advertising space. Newspapers are supported primarily by the sale of advertising space. This one is a bit more on the hard side. I almost said sale of advertisements, which wouldn't be much of an issue even if I did, but the length doesn't match the original sentence. This is an important concept to help you make different judgment calls. I had the feeling that advertisements is too short, so a good chunk of the three seconds for preparation was me thinking back about what it actually was. I figured it out this time, but in case if I don't, I will settle for a 2 in content. Here's a little secret. During my only take of the test, I'm pretty certain I messed up 2-3 to three sentences for this part. Sure, by messing up I mean just dropping a few words, but this is not just for me. Some students have shared their experiences and said that their performance on repeat sentence was worse than expected, and then they still got their 79. Therefore, allow yourself some room for making minor mistakes. It's probably not as big of an impact as you think it is. Some things are supported is a common expression that you should have come across before, so at least get this bit right. By the sale of is a big chunk of four words that you also should have no problem with. And guess what? You already have six words out of ten. The other words, like newspapers and space, are not very difficult either. The only big problem would probably be primarily. What can help you with getting this word right is the fact that the speaker paused right before it, and there's stress acting as a natural emphasis on this word. The most plausible reason for a student to miss the word is either they don't know what it means, or they're not familiar with this structure. Understandable, but definitely avoidable with enough practice. So what's the old saying? Time flies when you're having fun? This has been quite fun for me. The pain comes later with editing. This is the last question for today. Sydney is Australia's largest city, chief port, and cultural centre. Sydney is Australia's largest city, chief port, and cultural centre. There's really no excuse to not get Sydney is Australia's largest city. The main problem with this sentence is probably the parallelism, the chief port part to be exact. Most students should be able to get cultural center because this is a very common thing. Students oftentimes can get the beginning and the ending of a sentence, but might struggle with the middle sections. In this case, getting two terms out of three for the parallelism is a very good analogy to getting two points out of three for content. If you end up saying, Sydney is Australia's largest city, something, and cultural center, you will be my new favorite student. Nobody likes the guy who gets everything perfectly, and that's why I intentionally made some mistakes in the previous questions. Do you honestly think I wouldn't have re-recorded the pieces if I messed up horrendously? Expanding on the parallelism, what you should have noticed is the fact that the speaker had very notable pauses between the three parallel terms. This is definitely an exaggeration for normal speaking, which goes back to the very important point that even the recorded questions were read from a script. Therefore, even though you might not be able to replicate the entire sentence and ensure 100% accuracy, this is the method of speaking which you should use as well. Or do whatever the hell you want. 
You're the one paying for the test, and it's your future that's hanging in the balance. Why would you listen to someone who got a perfect score? Before I end this video, I'd like to quickly address a problem that a friend of mine asked me a few days ago. He's doing postgrad in Melbourne, so he is well read with plentiful academic vocabulary and knowledge in English. However, he found repeat sentence to be the kryptonite to his existence. This is why I mentioned a couple times in the read aloud and repeat sentence videos that knowing what the word is doesn't necessarily mean you have a good association between the word's pronunciation and spelling. This is another good reason why you shouldn't ignore read aloud during practice, because it provides a much needed opportunity for many students to try and form this connection that is lacking from their education and daily interactions. Speaking is very well linked to listening, and not having a strong correlation between spelling and pronunciation is a major contributor to why he might have been struggling. Start by saying the words out loud so you get to hear it from yourself, and that's how you don't panic when you hear the words being said to you. That'll be all for this video. I genuinely hope that you have learned something useful today and can soon achieve your target score. Please like, subscribe, and share the usual stuff, and don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Let's not fire Dr. Fauci, but maybe instead impeach his orange-colored boss. And I'll see you all next time.